Hello, good afternoon. We're going to look at work culture and some of the effects that it has on corporations. So we're going to help uh, define what is work culture. We're going to look at how does it affect corporations and what are some areas of work culture that corporations ought to focus on. So, you know, first we have to define what work culture is. Work culture is the attitudes and beliefs of a corporation and that affects the overall environment. So if we have to put it lightly, it's kind of the vibe of the company, right? And so the problem when talking about work culture is really defining uh, what it is entirely, because there's so many minute concepts that build into work culture. And work culture has an immense impact on the corporation's effectiveness, the results, and how well they retain talent. A lot of people come into a company thinking the pay is the only thing that matters, and then they learn, uh, they leave in two years. You especially see this with investment banking, a lot of high uh, level other jobs such as law firms, right? Where people come in, the work culture is not very good, and then they leave. And so we're gonna look at how do corporations uh, look at it and how it's important to them, and primarily looking at work-life balance, corporate leadership, and as well as diversity and inclusion. And those are the three ones that we really highlighted as the ones that corporations and as uh, employees ought to focus on. So I'm gonna pass it off to Daniel, and he's gonna talk about corporate leadership and the impact that it has on corporations. Thank you, Christian. I'd like to touch on that first question you, you asked at the beginning of the presentation, defining work culture. Now, quick Google search brings up things like team values, shared values, bonding over the water cooler. If you ask me, it comes down to two things, the people you work with and the type of work you're doing. My past job, the work was horrendous. Long hours, physical labor, but the people were really great. So together, we, conduct, we created this kind of robust work culture where it was us against all the bad work, and the work got done. Now, to touch on leadership, if, at the beginning of this project, I thought leadership came in one of two ways. Angry sports coaches, or kind of nice librarians that always give you a good shh when you're being a little too loud. Now, the 2018 January issue of Harvard Business School magazine titled The Leader's Guide to Corporate Culture by Boris Goisberg and Associates. That was this little chart here. Eight different leadership styles. At the top, we have those that emphasize learning and purpose. To the right, leaders that focus on caring and order. At the bottom, leaders that really stress authority and safety. And then off to the left, those that really care about enjoyment and results. Now, no matter where you land on this chart, you gotta remember, work, work culture and leadership go hand in hand, like yin and yang, or a really good PB and J. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like to pass it off to Zach to go on about uh, work-life balance. Thanks, Alan. Uh, so for work-life balance, um, businesses that can implement a positive work-life balance uh, have tremendous effects on uh, employees' lives. Uh, they can really affect uh, each individual employee's life directly. Uh, I, I wanted to start off with a, uh, a little bit about what is work-life balance. It's a way that the corporation can separate uh, the individual lives of the employee and the needs of the company. So here's a quote from uh, Kim, 2014. She's a researcher in sociology. A successful work-life balance is positively associated with lower turnover, higher work engagement, increased productivity, and organizational commitment. So I wanted to touch base on uh, the lower turnover and organizational commitment being positive attributes of building a successful business. Um, for uh, lower turnover, you're gonna have, on average, higher experience levels within your organization, which is always a good thing uh, to have those experienced individuals being able to bring up the newer employees, teach them the ways, everything like that. And with organizational commitment, you're gonna have each individual employee um, care more about the success of the business. So with their, their commitment to the business, they wanna see it grow just as much as uh, the leaders of the business are gonna to wanna to see it grow. And it's gonna overall facilitate this process where they can all grow together, become a bigger corporation, and it's easier for you to um, introduce new employees to the environment and give them that, um, I guess, opportunity to grow. Um, benefits to business employees, I just said, uh, but there was an interesting study that came out of Iceland. Um, according to Knowles and Villegas 2021, um, 
Nold and Villagas, they're uh, researchers and reporters with the, um, I want to say they're the New York Post. Uh, they had a quote of a study uh, conducted in Iceland. 1% of the population of Iceland uh, was part of a work study uh, where they worked uh, from 40 hours a week to 35 hours per week. They worked one less work day, so they only worked four days a week, and they also didn't get a reduction in pay. So they got paid the same and worked less. Uh, overall, um, here's a quote from it. It was the world's largest ever trial of a shorter work week in the public sector. Uh, and it was by all measures a overwhelming success. Uh, during the study, they concluded that um, overall, uh, if you increase the number of hours that an individual employee would work, they would see a decrease in their work product. Um, so if they didn't get the adequate rest that they needed, uh, you'd see diminishing returns on their work product. Uh, so the lesson here is that uh, not all uh, cutting is bad. We can cut the number of hours that we work, still get paid the same, and you're actually gonna see more productivity, and you're gonna see work life and stress levels reduced as well. Um, we've already seen implementation of stuff like this with COVID-19 and everyday businesses. Uh, people are starting to work more from home. They realize we don't always have to be in the office. We can do things from home as well. So some, uh, some businesses I know, uh, they have partial weeks where they come into the office, and then the rest of the time they can do their job at home. Um, some examples of leaders facilitating healthy work-life balance. It could be as easy as just letting people go home early, cutting some hours, letting you go see your, your family's uh, recital, whatever it may be, if your kid's sick at home. Allowing that opportunity for employees to feel comfortable to come forward and take some time off so that they can take care of their personal matters so that they're not stressed and distracted while they're at work is important. And so now I'm gonna, uh, Hand it off to So I'm going to talk about the diversity and inclusion. So diversity means political beliefs, racial ethnicities, and gender identities. So in workplace, diversity means people, uh, a group of individuals who bring new perspective and backgrounds to the table. Inclusion means people from diverse mix feels involved, respected, valued, treated fairly and embedded in the culture. Empowering employees and recognizing their special talents are, pre are part of creating an inclusive company. Diversity and inclusion are both important. Diversity without inclusion can create a toxic culture in the workplace and inclusion without diversity can create a stagnant and uncreative environment. So there are some benefits to the diversity and inclusion. Number one, bigger talent pool. So expanding the recruitment searches uh, to the more diverse candidates, including racial, background, and gender uh, diversities uh, we can widen up the talent pool and also uh, increase the change, increase the changes of uh, best hire. And the next one is increase employee engagement. If people are more included in their work, they're more engaged. So the higher engagement employees go extra mile for their organization. Higher engagement is uh, higher engagement is proficient for profitability, retention, and team morale. Another one is better decision making. Diverse teams make better decisions. Clover Pop and uh, online uh, pro decision making platform examines 600 business decisions made by 200 teams. They found out that the diverse teams made 65% of improvement in their decision making. The last one is the stronger business results and profits. So uh, diver diversity and inclusion is e uh, efficient for an employee's mental health. It also has some 
downstream impact, but it's good for the company. Businesses which has businesses like top quartile businesses for racing, for race, ethnicity, and background, they have a 25% likelihood of getting profitable. I'm gonna pass it off to Samuel to conclude the presentation. Thank you, Faiza. So today we've discussed the different types of workplace culture and how they affect the company and the employees involved. So every company and every industry is gonna be slightly different, but the three main points that we spoke on today, you're gonna to be able to find in every workplace culture. These are establishing a healthy work-life balance, effective leadership, and diversity and inclusion. Um, so establishing a healthy work-life balance is gonna decrease turnover and increase organizational commitment. This meaning that if you can respect the employee's time away from the office, whenever they're in the office, they'll respect your time in the office as well. Effective leadership is going to drive the work culture to aim for a more positive work environment overall. And diversity and inclusion create a more secure workplace with a more expensive talent pool. So what this brings us to is these three key components are gonna be extremely important, especially in the environment we're in now. As you guys can see, there is a labor shortage in the nation, and this is going to be coming because people are not looking through at these three components. So one of the easiest ways that a company is able to be competitive in this market is by showing a possible candidate that they are diverse that they have that effective leadership and they are here to help not only themselves, but the employees. So next time that you have a loved one or a friend complaining about that supervisor that they just can't stand or their job overall, stop and ask yourself, is it truly a labor shortage or is this a reassessment of their workplace culture? Thank you.